think this is up and running. Welcome back. We're going to continue our event, which I believe was interrupted by a Windows update. Um, also, I lost my last game because I got distracted. So, losing to a 1600 kind of sucked. But, you know, we'll recover from it somehow. No big deal. Yeah, I would use Linux, except there aren't very many games for Linux. Um, not that chess is necessarily a Windows game, but like all the multimedia stuff is for Windows. Um, Mac is good if you're trying to like make a PowerPoint or presentation or something, but um, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily use a Mac for gaming. Oh, he's 1900. Okay. I'm still puzzled why it took him so long to win that. It's not like I played that so well, but um, let's inflate my ego a bit. <laughs> okay, fine. You want to put your bishop there? We'll oppose it. Just put all the pawns forward a square. Bet my opponent's never seen this before. <coughs> but yeah, I guess this is why you're supposed to play um, h6 early, so you don't have to play f6. Okay. Now I have to play g5 because I played that, and... Yep, there's a whole nursery rhyme about there's a hole in the bucket and you need to um, patch the hole in the bucket, but in order to create the patch, you have to, like, get a sharpening stone to sharpen the leather, but um, in order to produce a sharpened stone, you have to, um, something about, like, filling a bucket with water, and so... Anyway, it's the whole point of that nursery rhyme um, is that it's a problem in recursion, and that um, basically I had this problem in recursion here that I pushed my f pawn, which forced me to push my g pawn, and now like everything's all falling. Um, just how one thing leads to another. Um, it's not exactly recursion, but it's just a fun little allegory. Anyway, I'm not too concerned about my king being this far forward. He can defend himself. My king is more than capable. I'm guessing they'll play pawn e4. There it is. I guessed it. Not a hard move to guess. Um, so the question is, how do I react to this stuff? Like, obviously I'm giving away some squares on my side of the board, um, but I'm trying to win material, because I'm being greedy. Um, so this loses my knight unless I play forward at the knight. Um, finally, my opponent's using all their pieces, but will it be enough? That's the question. Uh, do I have a way to repel this queen immediately? I don't think so. Oh, this would lose my queen. We can't do that. Um, Alright, so we'll take this way. Even though this appears to open up the position, it actually kind of closes it. Uh, as long as they have pawns in their way, they can't use their pieces to hit my king. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm a big fan of three-minute Crazy House, not so much of Crazy House with an increment. Um, it's just my own personal taste, is that it's more fun to play this game when people can lose any move by not attacking fast enough. It's just some of the same mayhem that carries over from Bug House. Um, so we sacked a queen. It's only a queen. Oh! Alright, there it is. Thank goodness. Now we can start winning. So 
so like I said, I'm bad at opening some crazy house. I had assumed that um, my king was safe enough that if I didn't exchange pieces, I'd be okay. Um, and that wasn't really the case. Even though I kept peace exchanges to a minimum, my position kind of sucked. So, um, the moral of the story is never play f6. So, um, yeah, now we can start winning. Um, so let's do that. See, you play h3, so you never have to play f3. So we're just going to beat this guy. Right, right, right. So I think it was the other game. I had a position quite similar to this. Am I remembering this right? And they did knight take c3 because that damages my pawn structure or something. I kind of like my advanced knight on e5. Just a lot. It's kind of like the most amazing piece ever. So even if I'm losing material on my queen side, and maybe I'm not, um, this position's still pretty great. So never do this like knight facing knight thing, because um, it loses a tempo every time you do it. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, let's start with the check. I was going to do this check, um, then I realized yeah, this is even stronger. Okay, and then let's use a knight and queen to go win this game, I guess. King c 8 the only surviving move. Um, that's a tough break. Yeah, king c 8 and then king b8, and maybe I don't mate right away. Um, so that was fun. Um... Yeah, we're just going to avoid mainstream openings. You're going to sack? Go ahead. Thank you. We have a bishop. Um, so we'll just guard this square. Um, okay, so I've done a pawn facing pawn thing here, which is actually a bit scary. But I have pieces covering my king side, so I should be okay? Probably. We'll find out. Knight e5's an idea. Um, I'm not sure if it works. We'll find out. So I've got a knight and a pawn in hand, and I dominate the center, and their queen's a soft target. On the downside, um, my king's a little bit exposed here. Just a little bit. So I want to play e6, as long as it doesn't like instantly lose. I think it's okay. Um, I missed this attack. Oops. All right. So what do I do now? Um, queen f7 is the biggest threat in the position. I should do something about that. So this addresses the queen f7 threat. I've lost a pawn. My king is wide open. Um, I might still be okay. It's just um, I'm under pretty heavy fire at the moment, so I do need to develop my pieces. Um, okay, so this covers all the promotion squares. Um, so I might be okay here. My opponent needs to develop if they're going to continue attacking. <laughs> what psychedelic colors. <laughs> yeah, you're right, it is a lot more colorful than just the plain old dark user style. Um, I kind of like the 3D pieces, though. They're kind of fun. Okay. So the threat is f8 double check. Uh, it's kind of a big threat. So I need some ideas of my own here. 
I guess I have to sack the bishop to deal with the double check thing. Um, but I might still be okay. They don't have a check at the moment. They're threatening bishop e7, but presently there is no check. So we're just going to develop the knight uh, to cover the e7 square, maybe start to menace stuff over here. Um, really, my opponent needs just another knight in hand, and this would be over, but they don't have a knight in hand. Um, okay, so we're going to place this forward a bit. h4, f4 looks fun ish, maybe. Um, okay, they're getting the knight. I'm getting some counterplay, hopefully. At least that's the plan. Oh wait, they're not getting my knight. Never mind. This kind of changes our dynamic, doesn't it? They don't have any material in hand, so they have to like do something like pawn e5 to keep attacking. And the question to me is how to meet this. Um, there's lots of fun moves I could play here. Uh, yeah, let's not get the knight pinned. So I guess that requires I go here. And then we got knight f4 and knight takes g2 coming up. Right, so the obvious is played, the obvious retort is played. If they play g3, I play knight at g2, and surely I'm winning. Um, okay. I don't totally get why you'd give away your queen. There's something I'm not seeing here. Uh, I guess I run like this. Maybe going directly to h8 was stronger. So I'm attacking a knight. Oh, but the knight's defended. My attack is not so strong after all. Alright, so I can start to take things now, right? have one knight in hand and two queens. What an imbalance. Okay, let's focus on trying to remove all these attacking pieces as swiftly as possible. Right, so... Um, I can now remove the f7 pawn. And I do. So now I'm just up a clean, uh, a whole lot of material. So now we just go for mate. My opponent has no pieces to drop. Um, I'm threatening knight e2 check. Also, I'm threatening knight h3 check. And the real point is that I take here. And then surely I must have something here, right? There's something wrong about chess if I have nothing here. Alright, so this allows my knight to drop back to g5 with check. Um, and I can put my queen on f3. Regardless where he went, I'm pretty sure that wins somehow. So. Alright, we still need the top 29 spaces to get anywhere. I don't think I'm going to make it in time, but we're going to have a fun tournament anyway. I need to step things up a bit. And, like, not get schooled in the opening every time. So let's try to step that up a bit, shall we? So e3, etc., etc. 
Um, Krosky says that sometimes you can even play uh, for e4. I'm not totally convinced. All right, so this opens up all kinds of holes on the dark squares. Um, and I assume I'm winning here just because, like, holes everywhere. But maybe I'm not. I really like this pawn on e5. Um, all right, so the other game I managed to trap my opponent's queen. I don't think that's happening this time. Knight takes g7 looks tempting. Oh, yeah, I guess I could have won my opponent's queen after knight takes g7. Um, so that wouldn't have been bad. Um, still, I was trying to find a way to make this work without having to do that first. Because maybe I want to sacrifice it on f6 instead, or maybe I want to sacrifice something else. Uh, this looks tempting. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's see. You're right, though. Knight takes g7 is probably the cleanest way to go about it because um, uh, they take and their king... I'm sorry, they do queen takes. I play knight e7 and then bishop f6. And I'm just better there. Okay, so this, um, I've already got equality. Yeah, my opponent has a pawn in hand, but I'm not afraid. I've, um, could I do pawn g4 here? Or bishop g4? Bishop g4 is thematic. We'll stick with that. Even though pawn g4 might have just kicked the knight somewhere where it doesn't want to go at all. Um... Okay, my opponent wants to sack. Uh, I guess we play this. And hopefully pawn e6 doesn't kill me. If it doesn't, then I've got a really nice position. If it does, um, I've learned something. Um, okay, so we've taken the center admittedly putting the pawn in front of the bishop looks hideous um, but oh fuck <laughs> there it is there's the pain train we found it guys all right so we're losing a knight and a rook for a bishop and a pawn and my center dies so yeah basically never push the c pawn so this probably marks um just that I'm not going to succeed in qualifying for Vichy Vichy's, like, uh, best of 128 bracket thing, the actual championship. Um, I've certainly put in some effort, but here we got an 1800 who's standing in my way. Um, okay, I'm going to attack now before my position completely crumbles. Okay, so my opponent has tons of material in hand. I am quite afraid. But, you know, fear doesn't win games. So we're going to attack. I'm counting on the fact that they haven't castled. Um, so both of their rooks are out of play. As well as their knight on C, uh, B1. So I might still be in this. This bishop c6 is mostly about defending the d7 square. Um, my opponent sacrifices anyway. So I get a pawn, they get a tempo. What they're going to do with the tempo, we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. um, 
Okay, bishop takes g6 is a way to expend the tempo. Um, hmm. Obviously threatening queen takes or bishop takes f7. Um, hmm. I don't have a check. So I'm always stuck playing defense here. This is a mess. This is a fine mess. Well, we lost to one exchange already. I think I just have to go for it and see where we end up. Um, this is my best... No, I made it either way. Yeah, so that's the best thing, is just get the suffering over with. The other direction, there was knight e6 and rook d8. Um, so I just got mated. Like I said, opening theory is my weakest point in the game. So basically this means um, because I'm failing the qualification tournament, I won't have any of the suffering of playing in the main championship itself. We won't get to see me play best of 10 matches against other participants in that championship because I'm not going to qualify. Um, I tried. <laughs> it's just a hard thing to qualify for. Um, okay, I don't understand what my opponent's doing. I really don't understand this. Oh. Okay. I'll stop stuff from dropping on g4. Um, okay. Oh, we've lost c2. Oops. <sighs> okay. Well, fine. But yeah, I think had I managed to qualify for uh, the actual championship, we would have seen my games go more or less like this in the championship proper, where I just get schooled in the opening and don't get a chance to show off any technique whatsoever. Um, I honestly think that that's how the matches would have gone anyway, so... You qualify by taking the top 29 spaces in this tournament. There was a sign-up list. It was supposed to be that everybody who signed up could play in the championship. Added. I think it was still a 3-2 time control. I could be wrong. Um, but and due to an overabundance of people signing up, uh, now the top 29 finishers in this tournament will join everybody who had the high ratings going into um, the championship. So because my rating was too low, I'm not going to make the cutoff. And because of that, um, my suffering ends once this tournament ends. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll go back. Yeah, so between just having a low rating and not knowing openings, I'm not going to manage to qualify for an event. Um, that's okay, because uh, scheduling the matches to play against other players is quite a hassle in any event. Uh, just requires time and coordination and effort, and then I have to, like, I know you don't have to stream the matches, but I would do it anyway, and um, let's see. So my opponent just going to keep sacking things here. I could have maybe played king h3, except knight f2. Um, so, yeah, there's been an, an unreal amount of interest in that event um, recently, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see, so if I give my opponent a rook, this kind of sucks. So, oh. Well, I'm just lost. Let's play the next game. Yeah, well, World Championship isn't going to happen. Or, World Champion is not going to happen. We know that. Um, Alright, so this last hour, I'm just going to break out all my old classic openings and get schooled in them. 
Um, this past hour I've been playing openings I don't know whatsoever. Now we're going to move into me just playing um, stuff that I've traditionally played, and maybe I won't get schooled so bad every game. So here we are, e4. Uh, okay, that's pretty nice. Check. Oh, right. Never mind. Just kidding. Didn't want that bishop anyway. All right, so. Um, let's see. I'm pinned somehow. Okay, you pin me, I pin you. My opponent's having some good fun with this opening, but um, I don't think it's suiting him uh, as the most competitive thing he could play. I could... no, king e2 would have been too aggressive there. Um, Alright, so c6 is hanging, g8 is hanging, a8 might be hanging. Um, we'll just take a rook. And if I can manage one more attacker on this side of the board, I should be fine. Um, how do we manage that? Okay, first of all, we deal with this um, G2 drop issue. Here we go. Nice. So I'm pretty sure I've got this somehow. I don't exactly see the mate, but... Everybody can smell that the mate's there somewhere. This looks very, very checkmate uh, I know that's a very technical term, but... Um, yeah. Alright, so where's the mate? Um... Cover the e2 square. Um, there's the mate. We found it. Assuming they don't block, and if they do, we just take the blocker. Well, that was an interesting way to start the game. I learned that queen h5 doesn't work. Alright, so that's one win in a row. Just got another, like, ten to go or something to make our way up to the top. Let's play all our classic openings. And hopefully our opponents don't know them. Alright, fine. Let's do this. Okay, take my knight. Or don't. Um, so we protect... I admit I'm way out of my opening knowledge at this point. As I was much earlier, actually. Um, but still, this position looks okay. Material-wise, I'm getting crushed. But positionally, it looks okay. take this bishop and take this bishop and our king is going to run like hell and maybe we survive um, if they drop a bishop to no they don't okay so how do I cover everything that covers d7 maybe I can start an attack probably not Perfectly safe. Right in my element. And by that I mean everything's hanging. Alright, so I can get the rook. That's a free rook. Rooks are pretty useful attacking pieces. Um, 
my opponent's trying to check me somehow, but they need to check first. Um, so I set up discovery. If I can get all my pieces attacking the king, it doesn't really matter what circumstance my own king is in. So, how do we attack? I guess we'll just keep taking things. This is a useful defensive move, I think. Okay. Check, check. And mate. There we go. That was fun. Let's just have some more games like that one. Alright. Oh, crud. We're playing a 2200. Who knows way more about opening theory than I do? Because he's 2200. Um, what is he waiting for? Yeah, I'm just completely out of my element here. We're going to try to develop and not get killed, but we'll see where we end up. Um, I assume this is fine. Okay. I guess they take C2, maybe? I don't know. If they take c2, I win their knight, but my king is exposed, so... I don't know. Maybe two knights c3 was a terrible idea. Um. Alright, are we exchanging queens again, somehow? Or is he dropping his knight back? Or what's going on here? Yeah, there's another queen exchange. Unless I have a way to make this more dicey. Um, I guess we'll just exchange, even though that helps him develop. does mean one fewer defender of this c6 square, so maybe there's something to that. But yeah, I wasn't kidding when I said I don't know crazy house openings. Like, obviously we're both out of book. Um, just kind of fun. So I guess my threat might be pawn d5? I don't know. I don't know what he's threatening either, because I've got c2 covered. And if he does his pawn at c4, I don't have to take it. I could just go to e4. Um, or I could probably do a handful of other things that I I don't know yet. Like queen e4 hitting this too. Um, if our queens re-enter the board, who knows what could happen. Because they'll just get exchanged a dozen times over. C2 is loose, but I don't know, like, what that means here. Um, knight e5 and knight c5 look kind of scary. Uh, but I have queen a4, and we have to exchange queens again. So, hmm. Actually, if he moves his knight... I might have bishop e4 anyway. Yeah. No, I think, like, top 29 is just completely unrealistic. If you look at the players list for this event, I'm, by rating, nowhere close to that. So, I shouldn't manage to qualify. Um... So... 
What do I do about all these threads? How do I begin to counter everything here? Um, I guess this is my counterattack. It's pretty pathetic. Mm, we have a two second increment. And he's played Crazy House a couple times before, so flagging him is not going to be easy. Getting him to make a blunder because he's in time pressure might happen, but he's not going to flag. Absolutely not. He might blunder due to time pressure, but he's not going to flag. That's like the one thing that we know is not going to happen here. Um, in fact, yeah. See, that's what happens when you try to beat him on time. You could argue, well, you should have just played faster, and he would not have seen the mate. And I say, nonsense. Uh, he's a good enough player. He would have found it. Um. Oops. Well, I did some stuff I should not have done this opening. Yeah. This is pretty terrible. At least I castled. At least I'm not totally dead. Um. But yeah, that opening play I had was extremely dubious. Um, Alright, so I've got these squares covered. I don't have that one exactly covered, but I don't know. Wait, what? What's this about? Am I actually getting mated here? That seems too ambitious. Um, okay, we'll try to play rook g8 if necessary. If necessary. Am I getting mated? How close is this? It looks pretty close to mate. Um, oh, he's threatening a queen exchange, which is the other thing, and I can't deal with that. So I'm actually getting mated here. Um, well, okay, you win. Nicely played. Yeah. Had I gone to g8 instead of h8, I might have been able to survive that. Going directly to h8 gets you mated. Um... Like I said, I'm nowhere near being able to qualify for this. Um, there's the uh, turnout for this event is 1,613 players. And goodness knows how many active games there are going on at once. Um, it's far too much. To be in the top 29 would be the top 1% of Crazy House players, and that doesn't accurately describe my uh, level. Uh, I might be pretty good at this, but I'm not near 1%. Um, here, let's sack and see what happens. Because this bishop is loose. He would have played the knight to h6 with check. Um, okay, yeah, I guess I made it there too. He didn't have to take on d6 immediately. He would have played the check first. Um, so, let's 
let's see, what do I do here? I guess we keep checking. Um, I'm still pinned. I do need to break this pin somehow. Uh, I guess I'll sacrifice a knight. Maybe that'll be enough to break the pin. Maybe. Alright, he doesn't want to take my knight. Um, so I've got f7 covered. Alright, I'll sacrifice my queen for two minors. Maybe a queen and a minor for two minors. I don't know. It's not a great position to begin with, but... We'll try to make something of this. Actually, I have... Well, no, that's not mate. It looks like mate, but it's not. Um, this is check. This is check. This is check. And I'm out of checks. Um, my opponent doesn't have any checks at the moment, but... This is pretty terrible, because I don't have a rook. So I'll attempt to cover everything around my king. It's not going to hold up. I do have this one threat on c2, but it's not going anywhere. And having additional pawns is not going to improve my position. Um, so of course my opponent sacrifices a pawn. I decline to take it. Um, I guess my knight on d4 does cover this uh, threat. So, okay, where's the mate? What's he up to? I still don't see it, because, like, I cover lots of squares. Um, okay, if I retreat, there's queen b7. Am I afraid of that? Kind of, but compared to the alternative, queen b7 seems pretty timid. Um... So he's got to play queen b7 here, otherwise there is no check. But the queen itself isn't enough to conduct this attack. They need more pieces. Meanwhile, I'm threatening rook b8, or rook hb8. Um, okay, so if I take the pawn, I lose both of my rooks with check, and my queen. So we're going this way instead. Rook hb8 is hopefully on its way, so I don't lose both rooks with check. Oh, what's this about? This is forced. Does this really lead somewhere? I know they have two knights remaining, but I'm covering all the knight squares, so... What's the big idea? I still have rook b8 check on the table. As well as queen c2, which might prove to be the fatal um, thing here. Queen c2 might be the fi final nail in the coffin um, that forces him to do stuff. Um, okay, so let's get my rook off pre. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right way to say it. I know on pre means it's hanging. Um, I'm not sure how in French to say it's no longer hanging. Um, and this rook should prove useful, except now they have a bishop there. <sighs> ah, 
that changes everything. Um, so I have to remove the bishop. The bishop's too strong. I still got all the knight squares covered, so they need other pieces in hand. Um, so three knights is not going to be enough for my opponent to win this, I think. Now, where do I run? I still think I have all the knight squares covered, right? Knight f8 is kind of scary. Um, well, d7's hanging, so I can take this knight. I can take this piece. Hey, what's up, Bigfoot? Just playing some crazy house. Um, oh my goodness, my head hurts. <laughs> this guy's not going down without a fight. Although I think he's out of pieces. And last time I checked, all these pieces I have could actually make something that resembles a threat. It was quite clever. Um, here, let's put a pawn in the way. What does he come up with now? Are we done yet? <laughs> uh, qualifier's not going well. I late joined it for the fun, but um, I need the top 29 spaces. And there's like masters playing in this event, so... Um, yeah, so number one here is Fide Master Garnek, rated like 2600. And my current rating is like 2000. Just so. If I had another like 400 rating points, maybe I'd qualify to play in this championship, but it's just not happening. <laughs> but we can have some fun um, playing in this tournament in any event. Okay, so we stop Bishop G5. Is he going to sack on f7 like everybody does? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no excuses. We're all here to have fun. Uh, so I guess I pin this and then just like pile up on it. Knight somewhere. But also this is a useful defender on the king's side. Or so Krosky says. That like keeping your bishop on the king's side is useful as a defensive piece. All right, so, oh, knight takes. That makes like a thousand times more sense than what I was thinking of. Still, there's one little problem here. Um, and that's bishop e2. We exchange, like, I take on e2, I take on f3. Actually, I'm not finding a move order that works. Hmm. That's a problem. 29, 2, 9 will qualify. Because 160 some people signed up for his tournament. So he's um, calling that list a bit. Okay. I don't think this works out for him. Like, uh, uh, what's he going to do here? Take on f7? If he doesn't take on f7, I can take on f3 with tempo. And I can place my knight on d4 with tempo. And I could place this with tempo? I don't know. Here, we'll move the rook out with tempo. I was going to do bishop c6 initially. And then I realized he has bishop b5, or this bishop, and just dropping it on b5 with tempo. So we're going to do this instead. My idea is that I want to gain as many tempi on this queen as possible. Um, although he's got queen d5, which just like, well, apparently he didn't play it, but it looked very strong. He's playing this instead, which is okay, I guess. Um, 
I'm just getting wrecked, though. <laughs> that was excellent. Um, oh, Queen e6. He doesn't have a knight in hand, though, so there's no mate. But Queen e6 is scary. Uh, I'm just trying to play forced moves here. Um... Hmm. Okay. Do I get to defend? Rather, do I get to activate my pieces with tempo? How do you mess this up? <laughs> or is it even winning? I should start there. But, um, this looks winning for white. But also... Um, I'm not seeing how. I'm just kind of despairing here. So my opponent has indeed chosen not to recapture the knight, meaning they have no knights to attack with. In theory, that favors me. Um, but I need to find some pretty accurate moves to survive this. Assuming I can survive it. So, how do I defend f7? Um, this looks bad. Maybe this works? I don't know. And then we run. And keep running. And hopefully we can run fast enough? I don't know. I see that he gets the g7 pawn. He maybe even gets the rook. Um, okay, we're gonna go the way that there's an automate in one. He's giving away a queen. What's this about? Okay. Um, where's his next check? I assume that was a mouse slip at sacrificing the queen. Or he just got exhausted and couldn't find anything. Um, okay. Oh, interesting. He's winning material. We'll see how well that material suits him. Boop! Alright. Well, that was fun. We survived, somehow. So we get to play against Big Chicken. Alright, are we gonna take this and see where we end up? How oh, fun. This looks fun. Um... So we're just going to castle and run away from Big Chicken. What is he going to do? No, he's not trapping his pieces. Alright, can I undermine this center? Interesting. Okay, so we'll just hold this center together maybe? Make sure his knight can't go anywhere, and if possible, break this open and have a knight in hand. Upvoted. Um, I did see discussion in the forum, ad nauseum in fact, about people thinking that we can vote on features, and then Lee Chess will just implement the most popular ones, or something. Which was not the initial point of... Um, person was trying to raise, but um, it was an interesting point. The initial point somebody had tried to raise was, wouldn't it be nice if we could tell the devs what features we wanted so they could better keep track of what features uh, to implement, or to consider implementing next. Um, and somehow this has evolved into, let's vote on which feature to implement, I guess. <laughs> um, 
two different tones with a similar uh, concept. All right, so the point of that pawn sacrifice is to get him to run his bishop backward, um, which didn't happen. All right, so I was trying to trade off pieces so my king would be a little bit safer, but he doubled down on that attack, uh, so so did I. Um, but is there a way to get a feature request upvoted? Not that I'm aware of. Um, Man, if there were a way to do that, some things that I've been quote unquote voting for um, for years would have got implemented by now or would have gotten implemented much faster than they did. Um, man, I wish I knew. <laughs> That'd be so great. Um, hang on. Well, I guess there is one way, and that's if somebody makes a commercial fork of Leeches. Um, and uh, it takes on a very different kind of corporate presence where you do try to satisfy the customers. And it's not just a fun tech project. Um, I think that could work. Uh, it's just one heck of an undertaking for any individual. Um, but yeah, with different like corporate governance and such, I think it could occur that people could vote on stuff and maybe even monetarily contribute toward causes and such. Um, But it's kind of a different philosophy than the one taken on by Lee Chess at the moment. Uh, okay, so we'll just start attacking, right? Okay, I see F2 is kind of loose here. I should maybe do something about that. Um, but yes, I understand it. Like, Lee Chess is just our ragtag team of developers. Um, trying to make a good chest service that's uh, fun for us to develop. Um, but it's all subject to our um, project maintainer deciding what features go and which ones don't. And he's certainly open to discussing things, but um, he gets the say on what goes into his project. Um, which is definitely a good quality control measure. All right, so bishop to c5 is his big idea. It took me a second to spot it. Um, hmm, interesting. What do I do about that? That's actually kind of challenging. I guess I'll take it, and I guess I'll block this check. So yeah, he does get to castle. That's well spotted on his part. Um, but I don't know that my attack ends right away. For one thing, I get this pawn on the 7th. For two, I get to attack this rook on a8. Um, I was looking for some other way to attack this bishop so I could, like, win uh, the queen. That's ultimately what I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm 
winning the queen would be a good thing. Taking both rooks could also be useful. Um, okay, so we're going to defend all the things. Oh, that's a good check. That's a really powerful check. Um, I think that forces me to block with my knight. Yeah, right. And sometimes in the past, Leechus has actually pulled its members for, hey, look, were these all these features we are thinking of implementing? Um, which ones do you want? Um, I don't know what the motivation there was, because we ultimately did implement them all. Um. <laughs> it's 3D, man. It's like you're in the Matrix. It's like you're really there using real chess set. Uh, so, let's see. It takes a knight. I don't see where he's going with that. Right, so he wants material. Um, wait, I have to cover d1. Okay, so we have to take this. Oh, we're just losing the event d chips, that's all. We're having fun though. Maybe learning a thing or two. Um, so I have to cover d1 meaning I have to play something like this. Actually, I had f2 covered, so I could have just taken c5. Regardless, knight c3 is not terrible, unless somehow it is. Um, pawn f2 looks scary. There it is. All right, so now what? He's threatening rook e1. I don't know. I guess I take a rook. How bad could that be? Thank goodness here there's an increment so I don't lose instantly, but um Okay. I'm mighty suspicious of what my opponent's up to. I did avoid the mate in one. So kudos to me on finding that. Um, maybe I'm surviving here? Okay, I think I have to run. Right, right, right. So we block this. Oh, very clever. Fine, you get a queen. I get this pawn. Uh, sucks. <laughs> There's mate. That's the downside of playing with an increment, is that your opponent gets an eternity to attack. Um, so here we are in 89th place. Um, the top 29 people who did not already qualify by rating are going to qualify to play in the championship. Uh, and while it's possible some of them did qualify by rating, um, and also signed up for the event in advance, I'm starting to think I'm probably not going to make it anywhere near. So, let's see how we do. People play well in these tournaments, or they drop out. That's the pattern that I've noticed. What? I have no idea what's going on there. It feels like I'm still okay somehow. Although I tend to be optimistic about my position. About my king, rather. Um...
Okay, so we go back. And I think everything's covered. Maybe. I'm just not seeing what he's doing. I have a sense, though, my opponent probably... Oh, there it is. There's the mate. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I announced it. I called it too soon. Um... Alright, so how do I defend my king? This position looks pretty bad. Bishop f3 looks interesting. Um, let's try it. If this works, we're gonna either way. We have to bookmark this and look at it later. Mm -hmm. But um, I might have just pulled a Nigel here, guys. Maybe. I'm still skeptical because I see this. And while I can take the knight, um, um, my king's still under attack, even after all of this. But I might have just pulled a Nigel there. Okay, so now what? Having survived the opening, now we get to play the main game. Hey, that's not the best position to start from, I'll tell you that. And where's my attack? This bishop on f7 has to go, because I can now I can play rook g8. Yeah, I had lots of king activity there. I had an overabundance of king activity. Okay, so I'm luring the queen away from g2. Maybe. Um, I think I screwed up. Okay, I'm very confused why I didn't take my bishop. <sighs> what a mess! I've never seen a crazy house game go so poorly with both players. I've seen games where one player messes up. I've not seen games where both players make such egregious mistakes as we've made here. Oh, it was check. Darn that check rule. Now if I can maybe start to get some of my pieces on the board, maybe I survive this somehow. I have to give him a knight. I'm not too thrilled about that. Um, oh, are we going to do Nigel phase two? Probably not. Uh, we'll try. We will verily attempt to do so, but um, this seems not to have a return trip. This seems very much like a one-way trip. Um, okay, there's no way I'm coming out of this alive, right? Okay, there it is. He found it. Still a pretty cool game. Still a second goose egg in a row when I need more wins to qualify. So, basically, I called it an hour ago. I didn't say so before the tournament, but I was pretty sure I wasn't going to qualify in any event. Um, but yeah, now it's pretty obvious, just doing the math. It's not even possible for me to qualify. That's okay. We'll still get to watch other people play. We'll get to commentate. Um, maybe even learn a Crazy House opening or two. Playing in the World Championship, you'd think you should probably know some openings. So, probably doesn't make sense for me to participate.
Um, Okay, well, I could have seen that coming. We're just going to build up everything on this square. Um, hmm, that actually didn't lead up to anything, did it? I thought I was going to have a way to escalate the tension even further, but I don't. I'm fresh out of uh, tensors. Okay, so I guess I get to fork here and I just win a pawn. Although I probably lose material immediately due to my queen being uh, an easy target. But if not, then I've won a pawn. Um, okay, queen takes, I do pawn d5. And now I'm just winning lots of material. Okay, let's just exchange everything. And oh, oh my goodness! Well, that was polite. Let's do this. Let's have some fun. Check. Okay, we got one, two, three pawns on the seventh rank. Honestly, rook takes and queen e8 is probably the best way out. Um, not sure what else I would play as black here. No, actually as black, I'd just resign this, to be honest. Um, Alright, there's a queen. There's a queen. Here's another queen. Take this queen. All right. Uh, check. I'm out of pawns, so I can't continue promoting all my pawns into queens, because unfortunately I seem to have run out of pawns. Um, so instead I have to just go for checkmate. Thankfully, with this abundance of material, mate's not too hard to find. Yeah, I don't know. We need a better word than pigs. Um, pigs implies that the piece is devouring all the pieces that lie on that same rank. Really, it's something more strategic than that. Yeah, we need a not only a more politically neutral term than pigs, um, but also one that better describes the activity of a pawn that's poised to promote, and another pawn that's like a phalanx or something. Something that strikes fear into the heart of the enemy. Okay, so shall we exchange material here? Queen c3? Not queen c3. Bummer. Alright, so f2 is a target. Whoa! Alright, let's do this. I know it doesn't work, but we're going to do it anyway, because the tournament situation calls for us to do this. Um... I need to win in a hurry, and the only way to do that is to play unsound moves. So that's what we're doing. Um, okay, I missed that. My mistake. But if the knight moves, uh, I still can't take. Again, my mistake. Well, that's a bit of a hassle. Um, Fine, I'm sacking my queen. I don't care. We still need to win this in a hurry. It's only a queen. I don't know, like, 
I kind of like the term phalanx, actually, because it, um, it both describes the formation of what's going on with all the pawns ready racing in. Um, very difficult to stop any one individual pawn without the rest of it, uh, its neighbors also interfering. But also, um, uh, just like villains and pigs and such don't sound terrifying. And a phalanx, that sounds um, scary somehow. All right, can I play c5 here? Oh, never mind, it's not happening. Um, I hope he blocks at the bishop. Okay, well, that simplifies my task. Except he's got mate in one. So, never mind. Damn! Oh, I walked square into that. That's my fault. I'm having too much fun talking about what to call these things. And not enough focus on the actual gameplay. Okay, so... Like I said, players who do well in these tournaments tend to continue playing. Players who suck tend to quit. I've not quit because I'm streaming, but um, honestly, I'm falling more in the latter category of just not per playing up to my rating today, uh, which can be evidenced by the fact that I lost like 50 rating points this event, um, despite playing some kind of fun games. You don't get points for playing fun games. You don't get points for hanging in there for dozens of moves. You get points for winning. That's how ratings work. So they need to invent a new rating system to reflect just somebody who's having fun and how much fun they're having. And I think that might be uh, proportional to viewer count if I had to guess. Um, well, I think I'm winning a game. So I've got... there we go. That was hilarious. We're bookmarking that. Sorry, opponent. That's going in my collection of bookmarked games. Um, but yeah, the... Mathematically speaking, I can't make it to the top. Oh, hey, look, we got Program Fox. Okay, he's playing interesting moves, too. Uh, he did stump me. He certainly stumped me here. Fine. I've played a most unsound gambit in reply to being just really confused. Um... Okay, I need to develop my pieces somehow. Um, okay, so this is what I was planning on doing earlier. Um, I just feel like somehow this can't be completely terrible. Um, oops, here we go. That's an attack. Um, I think I'm still okay, maybe? Maybe not. <sighs> I'm attacking a queen with tempo. I can't stop him from castling. He has stopped me from castling, but I don't know that that's the end of the story here. My pawn drop on c6 was retarded. It has completely failed me. Um, but maybe, well, now it kind of sort of works. Now I'm actually getting a tempo on this queen. Because um, now I can take on g7. And the king is an easier to hit target when it's stationary. Uh, so we're going to take that and undermine the knight. Well, no. More so, just shore up my king. 
Um, okay. I'm out of attackers. I'm very confused. I've never seen this material imbalance before. So we hit the rook and the pawn. I could have done this from c6 and should have, honestly. Um, there's my pawn, and now I can place the pawn back on c6. Um, okay, I'm losing material here. Uh, his knight has discoveries. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so I have to play that. Um, but now we promote. Except he plays f6 or f5, and we don't promote. But if he plays f5, I take his knight and get my queen pinned again. Maybe, I don't know. Crazy House is complicated. Wait, what? What's this about? Yes, it hits the queen with tempo. Is my queen tr surrounded? I don't think so. So we retreat. Queen e2 would have avoided the loss, or would have lost the pawn with tempo or something. My queen is more active on e2 than it is on d1. On d1, the knight hits it. So, that's an important tempo loss. Or is it important? Cause e8, oh, I'm sorry, knight b2, e8, knight takes queen, or rook takes e8, knight takes e8, knight takes queen, queen d8 mate. Um, oh. Well, this drastically changes things in my favor because this attack is just devastating and knight d2 loses the knight. Um, so unless I've walked into a mate, I'm just completely winning this. Okay, we'll take it. I was lucky to have two diagonal pieces in hand, although queen c6 would have sufficed too. Now that I think more about it. Um, Okay, so we'll see how we do. Oops, there goes my pawn. <laughs> he doesn't want my stinking pawn. Nor should he. Um, okay. My whole position's pretty dicey. Oh, I, I saw my opponent's title. Um, and having seen it, proceeded to freak out and didn't look at his rating. Okay, I'm now processing what's going on here and understanding that I might be okay. So let's just start the attack. Um, Wait, I can take that. I can take this. And if I keep taking things, maybe um, I'll have good captures available. Uh, let's take that. We need the rook. Um, here we go. Let's check and mate. All right, we're still not on course for the top 29, because I think players have dropped out now that um, they realize they can't get it. I don't drop out like that, but mathematically I just can't do it.
Uh, I need to develop. Um, this sucks. We got material. Now, what do we do with it? Oh, hang on. We need to deal with that first. Uh, sucks. We need to exchange so we can maybe land something on F6. Keep the square under lock and key. Um, okay, that's mate in one. We don't have much time left in the event, so I'm just going to go berserk the last game, and hopefully my opponent will do the same. I don't have enough time to lose on time during this what remains. So just go berserk and see how things go. Can we get a pairing? Please? May we please get a pairing? Thank you. painful. And mate in two. We're top 30, at least for now. One more pairing would be kind of nice. So d5 is loose. Knight d5 would be mate if he didn't have this knight on f6. He's covered rook to e8, so we need to open up other squares to drop the rook on. Um,
Come on, can we move? Please? Well, I failed in my quest to win this game on time, or quickly enough. Um, but I'm probably also losing this game. Um, Thirty-third place. Yeah. Bummer. Oh well, we tried. So... That's to say, the top 29 people from this event qualified to play in Fishy Vishy's um, following tournament. So, depending how many of these people are already qualified, I may or may have not have made the cutoff. I suspect I probably didn't, because who would take the time to play in a, a three-hour event um, for the whole event? and also have signed up in advance to play um, in his uh, championship. I don't know. I suspect probably not very many people did that, because playing this event is quite the commitment. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting tournament. The fact that we had that ridiculous game toward the end was pretty nuts. Um, I didn't realize my opponent's rating. I didn't even look at it the last game. Nor did I, um, uh, what's it, didn't look at my opponent's rank until like halfway through the game and realized that he was the number two seed. Um, but at that point we had to go all out for the win anyway, so. It was an interesting event. Um, I don't know I have much else to share at this time, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.